A very warm welcome to today's class. Today we will discuss a very significant topic which is pregnancy and lactation. As we have been uh, discussing human reproduction, pregnancy is the major event which leads to a healthy child or a healthy baby production. Now, what happens during this pregnancy and how the placenta is formed is what we will cover in today's class. So, first let us come to pregnancy. How do we define pregnancy? We can define pregnancy as the time period from conception till the childbirth. That is from the time fertilization occurs till the child has taken birth and it is approximately 9 months plus minus 7 days in case of human beings. We can divide this entire pregnancy period into 3 trimesters. Okay, these trimesters are divided according to the functional as well as the physiological developments that are taking place in the embryo. We had already discussed the difference between a fetus and the embryo in, a last, in our last class. So, today we will see how the changes takes place gradually from a fertilized gigot to the completely grown baby. And this entire period of three trimesters can be divided week wise also. So, we will deal with the broad three divisions that are the three trimesters and what the changes are taking place during these trimesters. And here let me tell you a placenta which is a organ that is formed by the contribution of both the maternal and fetal parts, it plays a very important role in pregnancy. Now, coming to the different stages of pregnancy as you can see in this diagram, we have a fertilized egg and day wise development till the formation of a blastocyst and thereafter our embryonic development proceeds and the complete baby is formed at the end of 9 months. Now, what happens during the first trimester? We can say week 1 to 12 are included under this first trimester and during this period all the embryological and early fetal developments will take place and the rudiments or we can say the uh, pre uh, formation of the rudiments of all the organ systems that are going to develop are produced or in are produced during this trimester. So, we can say that rudiments of all major organ systems will appear by the first trimester and in the diagram you can see it does not completely look like a human, but somehow there are certain rudimentary structures that resemble a human being. Now, coming to the second trimester, the week 13 to 24 are included under this period and what happens during this period? Development of the rudiments that were formed in the first trimester leading to development of your organ and organ system will take place. And by the end of this second trimester, you can see the fetus now looks somewhat like human. In the diagram, you can see it is the fetus within the amniotic sac, placenta is well marked, the uh, 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 limb birds uh, along with fingers and you can see the eyes are yet not fully developed. So, there are different changes that are taking place in each trimester leading to the gradual development of the baby. Now, coming to the third trimester from week 25 till birth, we can, we can say that this entire period consists of the third, third trimester and during this period as our organ and organ systems have already been formed, rapid fetal growth will take place, there will be deposition of adipose tissue, the uh, fetus will grow in size and it will become more chubbier. Now, the major organ systems will start to become functional by the end of the third trimester. Now, at the end of the th third trimester, there are certain uh, physiological processes that will take place that will help in expulsion of the child which is called as parturition which we will deal with in the later class. Now, let us deal with what is placenta. As I have already told you, it is a fetomaternal organ. 
Now, it consists of parts from the fetus as well as the maternal endometrial lining. It has two components, the fetal part and the maternal part. The fetal part develops from the chorionic sac and the maternal part is derived from the endometrium. The placenta and the umbilical cord, they act like a transport system for the substances between the mother and the fetus. Now, what are the functions of this placenta? Why at all there is a need for a communication between the fetus and the mother? So, it has various functions and some of them are listed. As you can see, it has a major role in protection. It acts as a barrier which do not allow high weight substances from the maternal blood to pass through into the embryonic blood. It supplies nutrition to the growing fetus. In the intervillar space where there is exchange of substances between the maternal and the fetal blood supply, nutrition is also a major aspect wherein glucose molecules are transferred from the maternal blood into the vessels of the fetus. It also helps in respiration, oxygen is transferred and it also acts as a endocrine gland or it is a temporary endocrine gland we can say and it helps in hormone production. The major hormone that has a significant role during pregnancy is your beta human chorionic gonadotrophin or beta HCG. This HCG what it does we have already discussed in our last class HCG will stimulate the corpus luteum to secrete progesterone that will help in the maintenance of the endometrium for the entire period of pregnancy. Ra af, uh, along with HCG, the placenta also secretes certain amount of estrogen, progesterone, human placenta lactogen, relaxin and all these hormonal secretions, they increase their level in the maternal blood which also helps in maintaining the pregnancy. Now, passive immunity, coming to passive immunity, how it helps in passive immunity? As the maternal blood and the fetal blood are in close association, so whatever antibodies are present in the maternal blood, say for example, the mother has already faced some kind of diseases and has developed antibodies against them. So, these antibodies can be passively diffused from the maternal blood into the fetal circulation and this renders passive immunity to the fetus. Why we say passive? Because it has already been formed in the mother's body which is now transferred to the fetal body. It is not of its own. It is something that comes from the mother and helps in a passive immunity or helps in immunization of the fetus till its own system takes up the function of immunity. Next storage organ. The placenta also acts as a storage organ until the liver is completely functional in the fetus. Now, after discussing the functional aspects of placenta, let us see how this placenta is formed. We have already discussed it is formed from the chorionic villi. That is why we say it is chorionic placenta. And so, this chorionic villi development is also a major activity that takes part in the formation of placenta. So, what happens? As the embryonic tissue of the fetus it will invade the maternal uterine vessels, they will erode the maternal vessels. Once these maternal vessels are eroded, they will lead to oozing out of blood from the maternal vessels, be it arteries or veins. There will be rupture and blood will flow. Now, when this uterine vessels are eroded by the time, the syncytiotrophoblast syncytio cells will produce a lacuna or a space within the already forming primary villus. And these space are interconnected with each other and these are referred to as your lacunar spaces. 
we will discuss this vividly with a diagram on the board. So, do not worry for the details, we will go into it. First, by the end of second week, the chorionic villi will begin to develop and by the end of third week, the blood capillaries will develop in the chorionic villi. That is when we say that these villi are in the tertiary phase or mature chorionic villi ready to form the placenta. The fetal blood capillaries will project into the lacuna forming intervillous spaces. What are these intervillous spaces? How the chorionic villi will penetrate? We will discuss everything in details. Now, the maternal and fetal blood will not mix. You must be thinking that once the tissue of the maternal vessels are ruptured, there will be a mixing of the fetal and the maternal blood, but this does not happen as the vessels or the projections from the fetus are in closed vessels and they do not intermingle with the maternal blood. Now, coming to the placenta. What is this placenta? It is formed by, it is a structure as I told you, feto maternal structure and it is formed by the union of maternal decidua and fetal chorionic villi. Last class, we decidua bhi aame discussion kori thile. The part of the endometrium that is slowed off after the childbirth, we say that it is decidua. So, this placenta is formed by the union of maternal decidua and fetal chorionic villi. Connected to the it is connected, this placenta is connected to the fetus by the umbilical cord. The fully developed placenta is a disc shaped structure with a diameter of about 15 to 20 centimeter which is around 2 to 5 centimeter thick and it weighs around 500 grams. Now, the development of placenta takes place around 8th week of development. The entire chorionic sac is covered with villi till the 7th week. As this sac, chorionic sac is that which covers your entire embryo. Now, this entire sac is covered with villus till the 7th week. After the 7th week, that is when the 8th week will begin, the sac will grow and only the part that is associated with the maternal part, which is your decidua bacillus will retain its villi. Now, the villi of the decidua capsularis will get compressed by the sac and two types of chorions will be formed, which are your villus chorion and smooth chorion. And by the end of fourth month of development, the decidua bacillus is almost entirely replaced by the fetal part of the placenta. So, how these changes are taking place? There is removal of the villus from the entire surface area of the chorion. Only a small part of the chorion will retain the villi and there will be compression of your decidua capsularis. So, all these events they are formed in such a synchronized manner that at the end only a part of the embryo will be associated with the placenta. So, we say that by the end of fourth month almost entirely the decidua bacillus is entirely replaced by the fetal part of the placenta and somewhat discoid, metadiscoidal type of appearance is seen. What can we say? about the placenta that is formed in man. If there are questions about say the type of placentation in man, we can say the placenta in man is chorionic because it is made from the chorionic villi. We can say it is hemochorial in nature. Hemochorial mane kona? Na amuro fetal, thin, fetal membranes tinita thai and maternal membranes tinita thai which act as barriers during the formation of placenta. If all the three maternal barriers are absent and the chorionic villi is entirely embedded within the maternal blood, we say it is hemochorial placenta. What is metadiscoidal? As I have already told you, at first the entire surface will be covered by villi, but slowly and gradually the later part only a small disc shaped portion will retain the villi. So, this is called as your metadiscoidal placenta. And what is deciduate? We have said that the part of the endometrium which comes out of the 
female's body or the mother's body after childbirth is decidua. So, this decidua which is expelled after the childbirth for that we can say that it is deciduate placenta in human beings. So, we have discussed the formation of placenta and the at, uh, uh, what we can say about the placentation in man, what are the different names by which we say that this placenta is present in man. Now, this diagram will explain in details. I will show you how this chorionic villi will penetrate the endometrium and how this placenta is formed. We will discuss everything in details. Tale jo diagram te dekhucha screen upare, kemti chorionic villi is forming your placenta. We will see the detailed formation kemti tiyari hochi, how kemti tamara maternal and fetal membrane they are forming, coming together to form placenta. So, a diagram to pila mana dikhi parthuwa this is my blastosis stage. Blastosis tre korn thila, we had a space or a cavity that was, this is a late blastosis we can say. Jyo tere tamara germinal bilaminar disc achi, we have the amniotic cavity and we have the yolk sac and this yolk sac will give rise to the extra embryonic mesoderm. This is my extra embryonic mesodermal layer. Now, this extra embryonic mesodermal layer will split into two and the space between them will form your extra silomic space or the extracellomic cavity. So, when this will split, we will have the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and splanchnopleuric as we have already discussed in the last class. Bahare rohila gote layer, au yolk sac pakhukula gigala gote layer, mojire jota rohila that is the cavity or the extracellomic space that is formed. Now, this layer of cells, they will form your chorion and this is my amniotic cavity. The cells of the amniotic cavity will give rise to your amnion. And the trophoblast cells that were there on the late blastocyst, they were differentiated into syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast. Once you get this picture clear, we will move ahead to how the formation is proceeding. So, once the trophoblast has been differentiated into syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast, this Syncytiotrophoblast will erode into the maternal lining and it will rupture some of its blood vessels. So, when these vessels are ruptured, the maternal blood will flow in this particular space. And by that time, the cytotrophoblast cells have formed the primary will lie. Okay. Now, these cytotrophoblast cells, they have formed your primary villi. Once this mesodermal layer that is there will enter into this primary villi, they will form the secondary villi. These are my chorionic villi. And once my secondary villi is supplied with blood, it will form my tertiary villi and these structures will protrude into the maternal layer. Now, once this structure will protrude into the maternal layer, they have blood supply within them. 
and the maternal blood has diffused over here. Now, let me rub this diagram for a simple understanding we can say that when these two come together lie in a position to each other the placenta is formed from here if this is my maternal layer and this is my fetal membrane from the fetal membrane the villus will enter into the maternal membrane these villi are somehow branch structures okay which is bathing completely in the maternal fluid or the maternal blood supply now these villi they will join together to form the umbilical cord which will have the umbilical artery and vein that will be supplied to all of this okay to kon hela amro villi chariyade first theory itla but with development as your sac grows it compresses the certain parts of your embryo and the rest of the villi will degenerate only the part that is in attachment with the decidua bacillus eta kono decidua bacillus is the endometrium or the endometrial part which remains attached to this villus structures so this is the maternal part that will form the placenta and this is my fetal part which is forming the chorionic villi so the chorionic villi from the fetus and the decidua bacillus they will together form your placenta now when completely formed how this placenta will look like this will be connected to the fetus umbilical cord is the connection that will connect to the fetus suppose my fetus is here this is my amniotic sac in which the growing fetus is developing see suppose this is my fetus and it is supplied with this umbilical cord that is the connection between the placenta and the fetus and this entire structure will form the placenta now there is no mixing of maternal blood why because even though the capillaries or the artery arterioles and venules have ruptured and blood comes to this particular space which we say as these are the villi and the space in between these villi is filled with blood so we can say this is the inter villus space okay so within this inter villus space the villi are suspended these villi are supplied with the blood vessels from the fetus so the fetal excretion for example we say whatever metabolic waste will come out or say suppose for respiration purpose whatever carbon dioxide will come out everything will diffuse out at this particular site which will be taken up by the maternal circulation for purification so once in this intervillous space the exchange of fetal and maternal the exchange will take place between the fetus and the mother so now i hope the placenta formation how it will look like chwa manakara sabu bale doubt ta thai je placenta ta pura entire sac upar thai na gotiye jaga re thai it is somewhat like this the structure and it has a connection and here is my fetus so here is my developing fetus so eta kon raila suppose this is my entire endometrium this part is my decidua 
Basiles. Okay. And this is my placenta that is formed by conjugation of parts from both the mother as well as the fetus. Fetus ro chorionic villi jibo, it will invade into the endometrium of the mother and it will form the placenta. This placenta will not only act as a barrier between maternal and fetal blood circulation, but also it will nourish the growing fetus till birth. So, I hope the formation of placenta and how this chorionic villi is helping in its formation is clear. Now that we have already studied the various aspects of human reproduction till the placenta formation and development of the fetus, we are left with parturition and thereafter lactation. Tala aaj je class re ame kon padhiba? Ame parturition kemti mechanism taro kono and what is the mechanism of lactation? We will deal with these two units or these two parts in our class today. So, what is parturition? Parturition can be defined as a process by which the fetal membranes, the fetus and the placenta are expelled from the mother's body or the uterus at the end of the gestation period or in simple words we can say it is the act of giving birth to a child is called as parturition and it is also called as labor. In some books there are there is written that there are different stages of labor. So, we can use both the terms synonymously and this particular mechanism is induced by neuroendocrine stimulation. Neuroendocrine stimulation mane tamura nervous system involve hobo and the endocrine system they will act together to make this act a success or parturition to be complete both the nervous system and endocrine system have to come together and see that both the aspects are taken care of properly. Now, what is the neuroendocrine mechanism that is associated with parturition? Now, fetal ejection reflex, tammane nervous system padhi labale neural reflex bisare padhi thibo. Now, we will study fetal ejection reflex. What is fetal ejection reflex? Fetus ko body eject out karibo and it is a kind of reflex that is why we say it is neuro as well as endocrine mechanism. Now, when the gestation period is complete, the fetus will send certain signals. The signals from the fetus and the placenta will induce mild uterine contractions in the mother and this will lead to release of oxytocin from the pituitary gland of the mother. So, pituitary gland will secrete oxytocin and the level of oxytocin will go up in maternal blood. This oxytocin will trigger stronger, further stronger uterine contractions. Oxytocin ro kama hala, it will trigger contractions and jitale barambar oxytocin concentration build up hei hei jiva, these contractions will increase in intensity. Now, at the end of about 40 weeks of gestation, I mean, agro it is 9 months plus minus 7 days for the entire period of gestation. So, we can say it is about 40 weeks. So, at the end of your gestation period, which is 40 weeks, these uterine contractions will begin. Initially, they are weak and painless or we can say it is a kind of false labor and these are sometimes these are a false indication that the mother is going into labor, but these are false indications or false labor and it is also called as Braxton Hicks. When these intermittent contractions will become more painful and increase in frequency, the duration and force will also increase and it will lead to the dilation of the cervix. Cervix tacona. Now, it is the birth canal, a method of reproductive parts female ro discussion karthile, so the vagina, cervix, how uterine cavity, kemti line up heki rohuche dekhi thile, so cervix is our birth canal. So, these contractions will lead to dilation of the cervix. 
जितेबाड़े सर्विक्स डायलेशन स्टार्ट हम वी से दैट इज दि फर्स्ट स्टेज ऑफ लेबर वी कैन डिवाइड दि एंटायर पीरियड ऑफ लेबर इन टू थ्री स्टेजेस स्टेज वन इज डायलेशन इट विल बिगीन फ्रॉम द पेनफुल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ऑफ द यूटरस टू कंप्लीट डायलेशन ऑफ दि सर्विक्स सो दैट ग्राउनिंग कैन टेक प्लेस ग्राउनिंग मान है जितेबाड़े सर्विक्सटा कम्प्लीटली डायलेट हो दि हेड अफ दि फिटस इज भिजिबल नाउ दिस् is the first stage of labor and at this time the membranes will rupture and the amniotic fluid will come out or in common terms am tamane sunithibo water bag rupture or water is coming out this is nothing but the amniotic sac will rupture and it will lead to the expulsion of the amniotic fluid and this in the first pregnancy it may last for about 12 to 16 hours in the consequent pregnancies this time period might go down now after this we'll go to the second stage the second stage of labor is expulsion stage what is this expulsion stage now this stage will begin with complete dilation of the cervix the fetus will gradually come down through this dilated birth canal and this birth canal will be formed by merging of the uterus then cervix and then vagina they'll form a complete canal or a broad channel through which the fetus will come out of the mother's body and finally the fetus is delivered these voluntary contractions of the abdominal muscles and the diaphragm that will help in the delivery process contractions of both your abdominal muscles diaphragm and the straining that is caused due to these contraction that will help in the delivery of the fetus now going to the third stage after the fetal delivery what is left out we have discussed that decidua formation takes place in case of human beings or we say it is deciduous type of placental formation so after the baby has come out of the mother's body now it is the time for the umbilical cord and the placenta to come out so we say this is the placental stage now the expulsion of the placenta which follows a few minutes after the delivery of the fetus marks the third stage of labor and it is followed by delivery a uh, followed by delivery so there is the beginning of uterine contraction when the baby once the baby is out of the uterus the uterine will uterine layer will contract so that the bleeding will finally come to a stop and it will start the repair process in about 28 to 35 days the uterus will re again return back to its normal configuration or the normal state as it was before pregnancy now in this diagram as you can see all the three stages of labor that we have discussed the 9 month old fetus completely developed coming out through the cervix the first the cervix will dilate the complete dilation will lead to crowning or the head will be visible the rupture of amniotic sac will take place and in the second stage of birth the baby will completely emerge out of the mother's body and in the last diagram you can see the placenta and the umbilical cord is expelled out so these are the three different stages of labor and this is how parturition takes place in females now what are the hormonal sequences that are associated with this placenta as we know is a temporary endocrine gland so this will also secrete certain hormones now placenta as you can see in the slide secretes crh or corticotrophin releasing hormone now these corticotrophin releasing hormone which is released from the placenta will further lead to secretion of dehydro ap androstenedione sulfate and this will lead to secretion of prostaglandins from the placenta and in the fetus the crh will stimulate lung maturation whereas in the maternal blood the crh will lead to secretion of oxytocin oxytocin will lead to myometrial contraction or contraction of the uterine myometrium muscular layer this will lead to cervical dilation and the baby will take birth or the birth process will be accomplished now these hormones they play 
in a coordinated manner as you can see in this diagram. These are the hormones during the first, second and third trimesters of pregnancy and during the first trimester beta HCG level will go up, it will stimulate progesterone secretion from corpus luteum and maintenance and thereafter the estrogen and progesterone from the ovary will continue up to the third trimester and at the parturition we can see there is a fall in both the estrogen, progesterone as well as the beta HCG. So, this will lead to the expulsion of the fetus from the uterine cavity. So, as you can see there is a complex process which is going on and all these hormones they together play a role in performing this complicated pathway of parturition. Thalia, I have hormones mani kem di regulate kore chan di parturition ko. Ebi jodi gutte single diagram re ame entire process ta ko explain kori ba. Thale, e slide ti dikho. E slide re, tamay dikhi ba, majhire achhi gutte full grown baby. After the end of gestation period, now this baby will push against the cervix and it will trickle stretching. Now, the stretching of the cervix will cause nerve impulses to be sent to the brain. We call it later neuroendocrine. So, these nerve impulses will be sent to the brain and brain will stimulate the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin. Oxytocin ra kama kona? Oxytocin will cause smooth muscle lining of the uterus to contract. Oxytocin contraction will trigger further contractions until the baby is completely pushed out of the birth candle. So, by this we come to the end of parturition. Tapare, after the child has taken birth, let us see how its food requirements are met. Janma ho ho chati kandi bo? No, kandi bata ame food requirements with a link kori parivani. It is a different environment. It was there in a amniotic sac, water filled environment. When it comes out to the extra terrestrial environment full without water, it cries and it is the first sign of life and then the first requirement is nutrition. Now, placenta is not there to provide nutrition. So, the only way the baby will get nutrition is through the process of lactation. Lactation is the production of milk in the mammary glands of the mother. Female reproductive system re mane paka mammary glands ro details bhi hame describe kori thile. Kaun kaun parts achi taro? Edi dikhi ba, how is it functional? So, these mammary glands will produce milk and it will be the first source of nutrition for the newly born child. Now, after the child birth, the alveolar cells will get enlarged and distended and it will start forming milk. This process is called as lactogenesis. What is involution then? Lactogenesis is formation of milk. Jetabade after the normal period of lactation, say for example, from 7 to 9 months till the baby will feed upon the mother's milk, after that period is over, the alveolar epithelium will undergo apoptosis and the glands will revert back to the non-pregnant state or before pregnancy, jemti condition thila, it will again revert back to that state. That is called as involution. Taliti dita term nam janile, lactogenesis which is formation of milk from the mammary glands and involution which is apoptosis of those glands that were active during lactogenesis to revert it back to the normal state. Now, what are the type of human milk? Why I am saying type of human milk? Because then it are different variety I may to categorize kori pariva. First is the colostrum. Colostrum is the postpartum secretion which is deep yellow color and it contains a very high protein concentration. It contains immunoglobulins, all the five, mostly abundant is your IgA immunoglobulin and it is lower in fat content. Then comes the transition milk or the intermediate milk which is secreted from the mammary glands from day 6 to 15th and thereafter, after the 15th day, whatever secretion comes, we say that it is mature milk. 
the interjaco stage rate difference is that as per the requirement of the child, the concentration of the constituents varies. Now, in this diagram, as you can see, left side rate, I dekhi paru thubo, tamo jo diagram te dechi, human breast ro diagram, se thire, data jinsho se highlight karchi, gote hala lobular cells and duct cells. Entire system re, e data jinsho, tamko help karibo in the secretion of the milk to the nipple through which the baby can suckle it down. Right side re jo diagram te dechi, se thire, out ke enlarged view dechi, jo thire ki, gote single lobule or the alveoli is enlarged, jo thire tamaro milk secreting cells label kora hai Now, these milk secreting cells are apocrine in nature, that is a part of their apical portion is pinched off to secrete the milk into this particular cavity, which leads to a duct system and all this duct will lead to the nipple. They will lead finally to a sinus that will lead to the nipple. Now, each lobe will contain lobules. A short recap of the structure as we have already discussed. In this right side, you can see there is a pectoralis major muscle, red color that muscle helps in providing support to the breast. Now, there is suspensory ligaments that are there that attaches from the muscles and they will help in attaching all these lobules in position. These lobules are composed of milk secreting glands which are your alveoli and above these lobules as we have seen in this particular diagram, the diagram before, there are myoepithelial cells that cover up the alveoli. These myoepithelial cells, they will contract once the milk is secreted into the cavity, the myoepithelial cells will contract and it will help in propelling this secreted milk into the duct system. Now, the myoepithelial cells, they are regulated by the action of oxytocin. Prolactin hormone will stimulate milk production as the infant will suck the mother's breast. A diagram theta dekhi paribo, clearly we can explain the entire procedure that the suckling will stimulate the nerves in the nipple and areola that will travel to the hypothalamus. In response, hypothalamus will stimulate the pituitary, here the posterior pituitary part to release oxytocin and the anterior pituitary to release prolactin. And this uh, oxytocin and prolactin, what they will do? Oxytocin will help in contraction of the myoepithelial cells. So, it will help in letting the milk down the ductal system and prolactin will help in milk production. So, this is how milk is produced and the baby gets its nourishment from the mammary glands of the mother. Now, let us have a detailed description of how these events are controlled hormonally. I mean, the killer oxytocin now prolactin release hochi. oxytocin and prolactin are the two prolactin lactation rejota help koruchi. So, monerokia gusoja prolactin that is helping in the lactation process and oxytocin is constricting the myoepithelial cells. Achha. Amara sabo bade prolactin secretion ho chi na ho ni mammary glands re. Normal conditions re prolactin secretion huye nahi. Whenever there is a cry or a sound from a baby or there is a suckling reflex, then only it leads to the secretion of prolactin from the pituitary that will lead to production of milk. Rest of the time, how is it inhibited? Rest of the time, we have an inhibitory molecule that is not allowing the prolactin to be secreted from the mammary glands. Once this reflex goes to the hypothalamus, hypothalamus, it will instruct that particular inhibitory molecule, which is your prolactin inhibitory hormone to be shut down or it is negatively stimulated to be shut down. 
once this inhibitory hormone is shut down it will lead to secretion of prolactin tale milk secretion kemti ho ji ame dekhile now we have come to the end of the entire unit of human reproduction starting from the anatomical aspect of both male and female reproductive system tapare ame discussion kale fertilization process kemti hue fertilization process pare implantation kemti hela implantation re morula formation blastula formation then gastrulation hela and the placenta was formed and the fetus grew in the mother's uterine cavity till parturition after parturition induced by the three stages of labor parturition took place and finally it led to we discussed lactation so with this we come to the end of this unit which is human reproduction tale pila mane reproductive system re not only the anatomical aspects we have studied we have also studied the endocrine aspects the neurological aspect how the neuroendocrine system comes together it's a very complex procedure and very smoothly it is coordinated everything goes in step by step without any conflicting situations and even if conflicting situations arise your body manages to repair all those things now what have we learnt in the entire process first in human reproduction there is no differentiation between a male and a female reproductive category ami jodi dekhiwa number of cell division everything is at par with each other there is no differentiation between the or there is no difference sorry not differentiation there is no difference between the sex both are equal second aspect what we learned that this entire process is dependent on the maternal endometrium major part is played by your maternal endometrium so even before birth even before a child has taken birth or come into this world it talks with its mother through the placenta so what this placenta does it is a cross talk between the maternal and the fetal circulation through which it gains all its requirements even it gains passive immunity from certain diseases it meets its uh, nutritive requirements everything that is a waste to the fetus comes out through this particular placenta formation and what am what else happens we have seen the very systematic development of a single cell zygote into a multicellular human being so when we say multicellular human being with different physical and physiological aspect we have well formed organ systems we have well coordinated neuroendocrine coordinations and what kind of physiology or how beautifully everything is arranged in such a compact or in such a stream, uh, streamlined manner that none of the artificial systems that are man made can ever match to this particular system that is present in your own body which is your reproductive system so at every point we have seen that when things proceed normally when everything goes in a normal process the end result is always a miracle we say it a miracle because have you ever imagined that coming from a single cell you will become what you are today a morula blastula gastrula then you finally sitting in front and listening to the lectures so isn't it a amazing thing that this particular system which we have already discussed your entire unit whatever we have dealt with be it the reproductive system so what let me note down what we have already dealt with the male and the female reproductive system then we have discussed the cycles that are present in the female we have discussed about the menstrual cycle 
we have also discovered discussed regarding the fertilization process wherein the single sperm that comes to fertilize the ovum even before birth we go through a rat race or a hurdle race to accomplish the final aim that is fertilizing the particular ovum then after fertilization proper implantation not only fertilization but implantation also teaches us some moral values implantation re ame kon dikhtile that a single cell structure going to a new surrounding first it accommodates takes time learns about the atmosphere then invades into it it doesn't just go and invade into the uterine endometrium so in any situation if you take your time energy and then decide at which particular path to follow you'll definitely achieve your goal after implantation the growth of the baby this was by a mutual give and take relationship that was accompanied by the help of placenta and then parturition even here if there was no mutual coordination between the hormones that are secreted from the fetus and the ovarian hormones then also parturition would not have been possible so everywhere from the beginning till the end we see that it's a coordinated mechanism very sophisticated and much more coordinated than any artificial system of the entire world so with this we come to we have also discussed in fact lactation so with this we end, come to the end of this particular unit of human reproduction so always remember that we never come with a manual by birth we just come with a mother who is responsible for your entire existence thank you